All right, so just because I, you know, learning stuff, and this is such a long unit, this unit is the length of fourth quarter for you. So um, I'm, we're going to do a lot of like old problems for warm ups going forward. Okay, so um, you have all of this information on your supplemental note sheet, which should be all, also out because we're going to add to it today. We're going to start ellipses today. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple of minutes here. I'll give you two minutes. Shouldn't need more than that to write me the equation of a parabola that has a focus at negative 3, 4 and a directrix of y equals negative 6. Go for it. Hey, ooh. If I've got a, my focus at negative 3, 4. So my focus is here at negative 3, 4. My directrix would be at y equals negative 6. That's way down here, y equals negative 6. That gives this a gap of 10, which means halfway would be my vertex, which would be at the point negative 3, 4 negative 1, which tells me that this is an up opening parabola. So my up opening parabola equation is x minus h quantity squared equals positive 4p times y minus k. Well, this distance here of 5 is my p and my vertex is my vertex. So this should be x minus negative 3, we'll call that x plus 3, quantity squared, equals 4 times 5, well that's 20, times y minus negative 1, we'll call that y plus 1. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Now that we have a festival, you know, it's great stuff for not a lot of money. So today we're going to talk about ellipses. Or ellipsi, if you will. And the actual mathematical definition of an ellipse is an ellipse is a curved line. I don't like curved line. I should just change that to curve. Okay? It's a curved line forming a closed loop. So it's a loop where the sum of the distances from two points, we call those the foci, which is plural of focus, to any point on the ellipse is constant. Okay? Now, basically, last week we talked about circles, right? An ellipse is a circle either stretched out horizontally or stretched out vertically, okay? That's what an ellipse is. Now, to show you that this definition here once again i found this wonderful site and what you got here is you've got any point any point that's on the circle let's see if i can blow this up a little bit here here So any point that's on this ellipse, the sum of the distances from these two points, these two points are called the foci, focus number one, focus number two, foci together. The sum of those distances, so A plus B over here, is always going to be the same. And this is kind of cool because it shows you up on the top that that distance 
is always the same. around is always going to be the same. The sum of those, those distances all the way around is always the same. If as A gets smaller, B gets bigger. As B gets smaller, A gets bigger. And so on and so forth. All the way around. Okay? Okay? So how you make, if you wanted to make your own ellipse, you you like let's say you want to make an ellipse in your yard. Put a spike in your yard at one point, put a spike in your yard at the other point. You tie a string around one one of the spikes. You tie the under, other end, you get a long, you get a nice long string. Nice long string, tie the other end around the other one, and then you pull it tight, and then you just walk in a circle. And then it's going to give you an ellipse. It's going to give you one. So this red plus blue would be your string in your yard. Yeah. The equation for an ellipse. There is only one of them. The equation for an ellipse is this. Okay? This is your ellipse equation. Now, this should also go in your ellipse section of your supplemental note sheet, which is the left smaller one, because there's more stuff next week than there is this week. So the, the smaller of the two remaining sections is the ellipse section. Okay. So x minus h quantity squared over a squared plus y minus k quantity squared over b squared equals 1. Pause. Give me eyes. Eyes right here. Ellipses are always equal to 1. Okay. Ellipses are always equal to 1. Okay. The one condition of an ellipse is that A doesn't equal B. If A does equal B, then you've got a circle. And run last week on that small section of your um, supplemental note sheet. Okay. So that is the equation of an ellipse. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the, I think it's six steps to graph an ellipse, find all the parts, find all the, the five major parts to an ellipse. Okay. Tomorrow we got nothing. Wednesday we'll graph more ellipses. Thursday we will go backwards. We'll come up with the equations of ellipses. Friday we're going to take a formative this week. Okay, so that's this week in Algebra 3. Here we, so actually before we get going on that, where you can see an ellipse in real life, okay? Let me borrow this for a second. If this were actually circular, sorry, if this were actually circular, it's actually not geometric or hexagonal. But if, so if you take a water bottle and you tip it to the side, then that circle forms an ellipse, the, the top of the water forms. That's this one. Orbits in space are elliptical. Okay. Cool. Um, protons, neutrons, and electrons. I couldn't think of an E one. I knew there was an E one around an atom. Um, this is a building, I think, I want to say in St. Louis. Um, no, I don't remember where that one is, but that that's an that's an ellipse. Um, some snooker tables are elliptical in shape. That's billiards. That's not pool. Pool is what Americans play. Billiards is the original one. There's no pockets. There's no holes on the billiards. It's, it's all about um, you have to hit certain balls at a certain time, and you have to uh, rectangular table. Like that. Three sides in order to get the ball and go. Okay? But the two cool ones, the two cool ones are the one on the right and the one on the left down here at the bottom. Okay? I'm going to talk about the one on the left because it's part of American history. Okay? This is the original um, Congress, a 
assembly line. So that's where the original congressman. And way back when America was just becoming America, a man by the name of John Quincy Adams, I think it's John Quincy Adams, yeah, John Quincy Adams, was a member of the House of Representatives. And he found that if he put his desk at a full time, he realized the room was lit. He found that if he put his desk at a full time, he could hear people talking to one another. And you'll see some of these rooms, like I, I, the Science Museum in St. Paul has one of these rooms. I think the, the Science Museum in um, Chicago has one of these rooms where you can be standing at a full side. So if I'm at one full side, and Shelby, you're at the other full side. So what I said there is I can talk like I can talk to that volume. Shelby can hear me, no matter how much other noise is going on in the room. Because of sound waves bouncing back and forth off of the elliptical walls. And so JQA, John Quincy Adams, um, discovered that. And so he put his desk there and then was able to listen to his political rivals at the other one. So he and they couldn't figure out why he always knew and had counter plans for all of their plans kind of a deal. So it's one of the one of the cool things about um, elliptical space So let's do this. Okay. We are going to end up graphing this ellipse. So again, I apologize, but you're probably in three different um, three different sheets going on right now because you're also going to be adding to your supplemental motion to this part too. Okay. So there's the ellipse. What do you think the first part, the first step to graphing an ellipse is going to be? Do find the center. You will still have what's called a center of the ellipse, which is different than the two foci points. Okay. So step number one, let's nail that. Let's do the easy part first. Okay. The first thing we want to do is we want to identify the center of this ellipse. And so that is the way it's been for two weeks now. Okay. That's H comma K, and H is attached to the X. K is attached to the Y. They're both going to be in a set of parentheses, so we have to think oppositely for both. So the center of this ellipse is located at the point 3 comma negative 2. Okay. Which we can then put as a C. We don't need the actual point on there. We can just put it as a C on our graph if you are starting your graph already. Okay. So three to the right, two down, put a C there. Shabam, that is the center or where the center is located. Okay. So, one, two, three, one, two. So there is my center of the ellipse. Okay? Now, these next two steps are, I don't want to call them complicated, but they are extremely important. So what you're going to do first is you are going to look under the x squared term. So I am going to look at this number right there. I'm looking at that, the denominator of my x term. I'm going to take the square root of that number, and that is how far left and how far right I'm going to go 
from my center. So the square root of nine is three. So I'm going to go one, two, three to the right, one, two, three to the left, and I'm going to just put dots there. Okay. So that is step number two. We're setting up the framework for our ellipse. Okay, I gotta scroll down and make sure. Okay, I did put it on separate page. So we're there. Step number three now says that I'm going to do the same except I'm going to look now under the y squared term. I'm going to take the square root of that number and that is how far up and down I go. So since 4 is the square root of 16, I'm going to go up 4 and down 4. That is the framework for your ellipse, so you can now draw in your ellipse. It should like it look like an elongated circle. In this case, we grabbed on to the top and the bottom of the circle, and we poked. which is step three. Step number five, oops, did I miss a step five? Where's step five going? Oh, look at that, okay. So step number five, sorry about that, I missed step five, I forgot I'd put it all on one side. The vertices, of our ellipse are the endpoints of the major axis. So an ellipse has two axes. It's got a major axis and it's got a minor axis. How do you think you can tell the difference between the two? It's got a major axis and it's got a minor axis. One that's bigger is probably going to be the major one, right? Okay. So the axes run through the center and they run vertically and horizontally. Okay. So which one is the major axes in this one? The vertical or the horizontal? Vertical, because it's longer, it's bigger. Okay. So that means then. that the endpoints of the major axes are the vertices. So this point right here would be a vertice. This point right here would be a vertice because it's the endpoints of the longest axes. So this would be the point 3, 2. This would be the point 3, negative 6. Good on that. Then our last step is the most complicated step. The last step for 
graphing an ellipse or finding part of the key parts of an ellipse is we need to find the foci. So the foci are located along the, they're on the major axes. So they're going to be on this line segment somewhere. <clears throat> we just have to find it. Okay? The important formula for the foci of an ellipse, write this one down, is c squared is equal to the absolute value of a squared minus b squared. Where c is the distance from the center to the focus. a squared is always going to be the, the number underneath the x squared term. b squared is always going to be the number underneath the y squared term. Now, in other mathematical classes, they might switch around a squared and b squared, where a squared is always the bigger of those two numbers. I don't like that. I like keeping things the same. A squared is always underneath x. B squared is always underneath y. That's why I added the absolute value. Okay. So in this case, we would look at these two numbers here, and we would subtract them. So what is 9 minus 16? Negative 7. Absolute value of that would be 7. Okay. So c squared then is going to be 7. So what is c then? Square root of 7. Okay. But we're going to say plus or minus 7, right? Because we've got to add or subtract it. Now, which way is my major axes. Again, you've answered this question already. It's vertical. In a point, what's the vertical part of a point? The x part or the y part? The vertical part of a point is what? The y part. Okay? Because the y axis goes up and down. So this square root of 7 number right here is going to get added and subtracted to the y part since the bigger number was under the y part, which means that vertical or the major axis is vertical. So what I mean by that is here is my center, correct? That's the center, right? Okay, so I need to add and subtract that square root of 7 to the y part of my center. And that's where my two foci are. Okay, now on the graph, how far is the square root of 7? Or how big is the square root of 7? Don't need a calculator. How big? Square root of 7. Anyone? But bigger than 2, smaller than 3. Closer to 2, closer to 3. Closer to 3, right? Because 7 is closer to 9 than it is to 4. Right? So I need to go almost 3. 1, 2, almost 3. Oops. One, two, almost three, and I put just an F there. One, two, almost three, just an F to signify where my foci is. 
when I get when I ask for the answer, where are the foci? Then I want them like that. You can split it up and you could do negative two plus the square root of seven and then negative two minus the square root of seven, or you can combine those into one with the plus or minus. Okay. So in general now, your supplemental note sheet should have a little bit more than this on it for the ellipses. Okay. So step number one, you should have find the center. And then whatever you want to put, H and K, what, however you want to do it. Step number two, we're going to go left and right A from the center. You've got to find A by taking the square root of what's up. Step number three, up and down B. Take the square root of B squared, that's up and down. Step number four, draw it. Step number five, find the vertices. Vertices are the endpoints of the major axis. Step number six, find the foci. That's that C squared equals the absolute value of A squared minus B squared. Okay? And so in terms of like your purple homework sheet this week, you'll see down in numbers four, actually no, in all of them, you'll see that I have, a, I'm going to ask for the center, I'm going to ask for the foci, and I'm going to ask for the vertices. Okay? So those together are the five key points that I will typically ask for other than the graph. One center, two foci, two vertices. Grand total of five. Okay. Let's put this all together now and let's graph a, an ellipse. <coughs> Quantity x minus one squared over 25 plus quantity y plus 2 squared over 4 equals 1. Step number 1. Find the center. Where is my center? Do we agree with 1 comma negative 2? Yes? Right one, down two. Center. Step number two. Square root, okay now. Square root of 25 is five, so that means I'm going to go left and right five from my center. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Step number three, square root four. What am I going to do with the square root of four, which is two? Up and down two. Step four, draw it. Should look like a football. Step number five. Vertices. My vertices left and right or up and down? Left and right because left and right is longer. So that means that I have vertices at, so this would be the point one, two, three, four, negative four, comma, negative two. And five, no nope, correction, six. Comma negative two. 
Agree? On the graph, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you'll have a you'll have an answer spot underneath your on the homeworks for where you want the group. Okay. Step number six. Here's the complicated step now. Okay. So the formula was c squared is equal to the absolute value of a squared minus b squared. What's a squared? 25. What's b squared? 4. What's 25 minus 4? 21. What's the absolute value of 21? 21. So c squared here is 21. I need c. Square root of 21. So c is the square root of 21. Since Tiana told us that the vertices were left and right, that means my foci are going to be left and right. Okay? How big is the square root of 21? Bigger than 4, smaller than 5, about 4.5. Okay? So that means that my foci are way out there. Because they're left and right, I'm going to add and subtract the square root of 21 to the x part of my center. So the foci are located at 1 plus or minus the square root of 21, comma, negative 2. Now, if the square root of 21 was simplifiable, Yes, we would have to simplify that for the answer. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns, clarification. The hardest one is the last step. Okay. But you should have that c squared equals a squared minus b squared formula on your supplemental note sheet because it will not be on any test or check. You can do the entire front side of the purple sheet.